Hello, my name is Brad and welcome to the Web Dev YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about MongoDB and how to set it up on a digital ocean droplet. Now let's stop rambling and let's get straight into the terminals. Okay, so first of all, what we want to do is we want to go to digitalocean.com. Then we want to set up an account. If you already have an account, like I do, log in. Once we're logged in, on the left-hand side, you'll see that you have a list of all of your projects. Here's a few that I created earlier. But for now, we're going to create a new project. Call it anything you want. We're going to call it MongoDB Sandbox 2. The reason we're calling it Sandbox 2 is because we already have a Sandbox 1 earlier that I was messing around with. We don't need a description and our purpose is going to be just trying out DigitalOcean. When we select Create Project, it'll ask us if we want to move any resources into MongoDB Sandbox. We don't, so we're going to skip for now. Once you've created your project, you'll see this lovely screen. So we're going to get started with a droplet. Now this is how you create most droplets as people who have used DigitalOcean before will be well aware of. But we're going to go to the marketplace and we're going to have a look for MongoDB. MongoDB 4.0.2 on 18.04 Ubuntu. So we're going to click this. We're going to scroll down. We're going to set a standard plan and we're also going to go all the way across and we're going to click $5. So that's 0 0.007 cents dollars sorry per hour and one gigabyte of space 25 gigabyte of ssd 1000 gigabyte transfer which is more than enough to set up a nice and easy sandbox server so we're going to keep scrolling down we don't need backups we don't need block storage data center is going to depend entirely on your current location i'm in london so i'm going to select london so i get maximum speed select additional options we don't need any of these and add your SSH keys. I have made another video on how to create an SSH key. And we're going to keep the default host name. And we're just going to make sure that it's selected on Sandbox 2, which is the project we set up before this screen. So check everything's OK. $5 a month, 1 gigabyte, 1 CPU, 25 gigabyte SSD. And click Create. Now, it may take a while for your droplet to set up. So we're just going to wait a couple of minutes and wait for this blue bar to fill up. Go and have a cup of tea. Go to the toilet. Go for a walk. Do whatever you want. Come back in 10 minutes. Okay, so after a few minutes, you'll see that we now have an IP address for our droplet. So if you just click this whole entire bar anywhere, you will now see that we have a droplet. Your droplet has been created. Now, there's nothing in here right now. It's completely empty, a completely fresh server. So first, what we need to do is we need to try and SSH into our server so that we can see a list of all our collections and our databases within the MongoDB. So to do, in order to do this, we need to create an SSH tunnel. If we actually go to a new tab and search for digital ocean MongoDB droplet, I'll put the link in the YouTube channel and under the description. We'll actually find the documentation for MongoDB. And if we scroll down, we'll actually see how to SSH into our droplet. So that is the command that we need to use to SSH into it. Although that's not going to give us a tunnel. That's actually just going to let us SSH into our box. So let's just try that first just to, you know, see if it actually works. So now hopefully you set up your ssh key correctly and it will be in your dot ssh folder which is a hidden folder within your root so let's just check it's there yep we have our private key and we also have our public key okay so now we want to ssh into our box notice 
that the text here doesn't give us our IP because we're on a documentation page. So we want to do SSH root at, then we want to go back to the previous tab, find our IP address, just click it and it will automatically copy to your clipboard, which is quite nice. Come back to our terminal and paste it in. Yes, because we're setting up a new connection to a new SSH IP address, it will ask us if we want to save our footprint. Yes, we do. So now that's been added to our list of known hosts. And now we're in our box. So now if we do a little list, we'll see absolutely nothing because everything is somewhere in our user folders. It's somewhere in here. But the fact that we can connect to it is good enough for me. So we're just going to exit, if I can type that correctly. And we know that it's working. Now, in order to tunnel, we have to do something else. So if we scroll down on the document page, we'll see this line of code here. SSH-L, port number, host name, another port number, and then we have our SSH details here, and then we have a few other commands that we don't really need to know about right now. But basically what this is doing is we're setting up a tunnel. This is gonna be our host port. So the port that you want MongoDB to be accessed from, from your local machine, would be this port number. Now it defaults to 27017, so we can actually make that 27017 if we wish. However, if we're running another MongoDB locally, it will not work because you can't have two services running on the same port. Um, and this is the port number that's by default on the server. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this, go back to our terminal, paste it into our terminal, and we're gonna go fill in the blanks. So I'm gonna put this as 27010, because I know that I have a MongoDB running already on 27017. Username is always root with new instances of the droplet. And our IP address is, we come back to the window, this IP address here. So click that again, copy it and paste it into your terminal. Now hopefully, all going well, we now have a tunnel going from the server on DigitalOcean, coming out on 27017, and coming in to our local host, which is my local machine connected to the internet, on 27010. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a tool called Compass, MongoDB Compass. I'll put the link to that in my YouTube description as well so you can go and download it. It's a really cool tool for accessing Mon MongoDB databases. So um, click disconnect just in case you have any other windows open and you've already uh, used it on a daily basis like I do. Uh, connect to. And here we'll see some favorites of mine on the left hand side once it decides to load. Um, I'm pretty sure MongoDB is built in something called Electron. Um, which is why it sometimes takes a long time to load because they have to contact their server to get some information back which is pretty annoying to be honest um, so we're going to create a new connection we're going to select our local host name as this local host and the port number should be whatever port number you set as the first port in this line of code here so 27010 and authentication, we don't need any. Because the beauty of setting up an SSH tunnel is that we've already done the authentication through SSH. So, you know, we've we've logged in as root on this IP address with our id underscore rsa dot public key in our dot SSH folder. So we don't actually need to do any authentication. You will need to do this when you set it up in production though. Just be aware of that. So now if we click connect, we will now see all of our collections and databases for our server. And this is coming directly from our new Lime droplet. And that's all there is to it. So thank you for watching. I will be making a part two on this on how to get to your droplet set up for production so that you can access it from APIs. Um, but for now, I think we're happy and we have now have a droplet. Um, just remember that if you're not gonna use it, turn it off and shut down the droplet. It's so easy to spin up new droplets, so don't worry about investing time into it. But it will charge you if you keep this on, and it will charge you $5 per month as we set up when we created the droplet. So make sure that you turn it off and you delete it if you're done with this video. Um, however, 
if you wait for part two, I will show you how to set this up in production and do not delete your droplet. So thank you for watching. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and also remember to ask any questions if you have any. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.